evaluating alternative data. It's a catch-22 for funds. Uh, if you're an institutional investor and your job is to evaluate the potential alpha of an alternative data set, how do you avoid the catch-22 where the costs of evaluating the data set is sometimes so prohibitive um, that it seems like it's impossible to even approach the topic of alternative data? How do you, um, how do you make it easier? How do you solve the problem of uh, evaluating vendors uh, of aggregated and raw alternative data in the investment context? Evan, do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think that the easiest answer to that is that really that calculus has changed a lot over the years, that if I think about, you know, years ago, you needed to go to the trouble of loading everything yourself, putting it in, you know, structure yourself, analyzing it yourself, doing data science on it yourself. And we've seen that there's a lot of firms that have come along to really simplify that process, either with their own data or working with other people's data and making that accessibility simpler just because of the amount of cloud technology that everybody's using now that's made a lot of the process simpler so i think those costs have come down a lot so if you want to just dip your toe in the water and say i want to check out you know one thing and do it that way you can pick a vendor that makes it easily or more easily accessible than another by the same token to get you know at a lot of the more interesting things certainly earlier in the cycle you do need to do a lot of the work you do need to incur those costs but that's where you have to have more of a commitment to it so you have to say like look these costs do get spread out over doing the work on 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 data sets. And so at the point you're willing to make that commitment and you can see a firm is making those commitments by hiring data science people, by hiring data strategy people, by hiring data engineers to do that kind of work, then you can start breaking it down so it's not so expensive on a per data set basis. But I think you have to make that choice and, and go into that intelligently rather than just saying like, oh, I want the latest and the greatest and the most complex thing. Yeah, if you do that one time and need to hire a team to build it, then that's going to be a very expensive proposition. And just, just like chipping in, but like the, the, the general feeling is that, as you are correctly saying, the cost of experimentation is going down drastically, which means that you can do much more with less, less people, less data, less data points, less, less complexity and everything. And also like the relationship with vendors is changing a lot so like a lot of these people will make you like try the things before you buy because like the type of engagement that you get is much more longer term and once you build specific models and things out of it it's very hard to change some of this stuff so eventually like you know finding that alpha and proving that a specific data has some value it starts with some hypothesis it's done with some modeling and experiments um, but it's not something that you just, you know, came out with one morning and like you do everything in one day and everything is like, you know, perfectly working. It takes time. And usually the time you, you have like different way to amortize that time and like running different experiments with different providers, different data, different data points. And honestly, there's like a bunch of like open source things out there already. Um, even like when it comes to data, there are like a few things that you can simply use to test. Yeah, uh, if I may add something. Yeah, the biggest cost was the cost of data, especially for very niche data. Uh, now we see a trend of that going down. And to, to the point, Francesco, uh, uh, also free trials are available. Um, I'm a data vendor. We purchase a lot of data. We sell macroeconomic forecasts based on alternative data, but we give client access for at least two months of, of, uh, of data. And we need to guide them often. So the publication of white papers and research, which proves that there is really a signal for different asset classes, be it equity fixing, is important. And this further facilitates the process because, you know, selling data, it's, you know, it's, it's like an exploring a jungle. Unless you have some signposts, uh, some concrete trading strategies, elaborate on that data to guide the researchers inside funds. Uh, you know, this can, can become more costly, but most of the data vendors now they tend to disclose uh, the signals they have. Uh, so it makes life easier compared to what was a few years ago. 